Hello, my name is Dr. Cheryl Burdett, and I'm co-founder and educational director for Precision Point Diagnostic Labs. Today, I want to share with you the advanced oxidative stress test that I think can be useful in so many ways for our patients. Our patients are well aware that free radicals are something that they've heard about that are bad for them. They also know that nutrients, different polyphenols, things like green tea and turmeric are good for them. Yet when we begin to recommend some of these things, they'll say to us, but I do that already. But do they do enough of it? Is it the right amount for a pathology they might be experiencing? Is it keeping them in a state of optimal wellness? Through simple measurements, we can understand, are there too many free radicals? Are they overcoming the mitochondria? Are they contributing to energy complaints? Are they contributing to other signs and symptoms they're experiencing? How much is it affecting that individual in front of you? We all know that antioxidants are good for us, but do we know the right amount? Do we know what will help that pathology? to move back towards remission. This is what the Advanced Oxidative Stress Test helps us to understand. Now we're gonna take a deep dive into the Advanced Oxidative Stress Test. When we meet with our patients, they've often seen docs before, they're struggling to get to the root cause of what's going on in their system. And they'll bring in testing that they've done previously. And they'll show it to us and they'll say, doc, what on here tells me if I'm at risk for cancer or cardiovascular disease? And truthfully, the answer is not much that's routinely being looked at. But when we back it up and we think about what is the process that contributes to aging and conditions of aging, we would all agree that that's the production of free radicals in the body. If we want to decrease our chances of cancer, then we need to minimize reactive oxygen species or free radicals. And that's exactly what the advanced oxidative stress test helps us to do. We all know that free radicals or reactive oxygen species are the major thing that cause us to age and contribute to age related conditions, but are we assessing it appropriately in our patients? The advanced oxidative stress test allows us to do just this. We start off with a total glutathione level, and glutathione is the major intercellular antioxidant for the brain, for the liver, for the lungs, for the kidneys. It's critical on a cellular level for the mitochondria, but unique to Precision Point is that we look at both total glutathione and percent reduced glutathione. Percent reduced glutathione is the active part of glutathione. It can either exist in a reduced state or an oxidative state. And when it becomes oxidized, it's no longer useful in the body anymore. So if you're only looking at total glutathione, you don't know, do you still have that active player? We break it down so that you're able to see both the total glutathione as well as the reduced glutathione. This is clinically meaningful because studies talk about in autoimmunity, you'll see normal levels of glutathione. But if you were to dissect it, what's going on is that glutathione is oxidized, no longer longer controlling the cytokines and inflammation that are inherent in that autoimmune disease. Through a unique process, we tease out the percent reduced glutathione so that you can look at that in a meaningful way. Also, it guides us clinically. If just glutathione were low, we would use precursors like N-acetylcysteine, or we might give S-acetylglutathione a very rapidly and easily absorbable form of glutathione. However, if our percent reduced, if our active glutathione were low, we do different things clinically. We're gonna use things like alpha lipoic acid or maybe selenium that help to recycle and oxidize glutathione back to that reduced form where it's usable in the body. Glutathione not only is important for our major organs, but glutathione is the major thing that protects the mitochondria where we make energy. So whether or not we're talking a patient with fatigue or mold exposure, uh, toxins in general, if we're talking about even a COVID long haul patient, they're beginning to say that one of the things that's most associated with those symptoms is a depletion in glutathione. The more that glutathione's depleted, the more that oxidative stress and cytokines can continue to populate and reproduce themselves. Glutathione is the off switch, putting inflammation back in balance. 
The next marker that we look at is F2 isoprostane. And this is a marker that goes up when there's more oxidative stress that's specifically affecting fats in the body. Many of you are aware of arachidonic acid. This is an inflammatory fat. It comes from things like red meat and dairy. This is why we suggest that patients limit those in their diet and increase things like omega-3 fatty acids from fish. We know there are benefits to this that reduce inflammation. Well, if you take arachidonic acid, that angry inflammatory fat and you hit it with reactive oxygen species and free radicals, it becomes even worse. It becomes F2 isoprostane. So when this marker is high, we know that fats in the body aren't functioning well. The brain is 85% fat. Every membrane of every cell is made with fat. So the ability to get nutrients into the cell and metabolic waste out of the cell are affected by these levels of F2 isoprostane. Other markers of oxidative stress are things that are created in a laboratory, MDA, T-bars. These aren't things that you can draw the blood and look at. F2 isoprostane is made endogenously and lets us know exactly what's happening with fats in the body. This is important because we often use omega-3 fatty acids for so many things in the body, maybe for cognitive decline or cardiovascular health. But if you put an omega-3 fatty acid into a system with high F2 isoprostane, that good fat will become oxidized in that person you're treating and it won't work like it should. A common omega-3 fatty acid, DHA, should convert to neuroprostanes that help us to think and to concentrate. But when F2 isoprostane is high, those neuroprostanes don't get formed. The DHA gets crunked up. It can't be incorporated into the central nervous system. It can't be incorporated into the myelin sheath in the peripheral nervous system, and it means those systems are compromised. So clinically, you're dosing an omega-3 fatty acid, you're using healthy fats, and you're not seeing the improvement you would expect. It could be that they're compromised because of this level of oxidative stress. It doesn't stop there. When F2 isoprostane is elevated, it will sit in the receptor where hormones should bind. So maybe you're using estrogen or a thyroid hormone, and you're hitting the upper end of the reference range, but you're not seeing the shift in the patient. F2 isoprostane can block that hormone from binding and decrease its activity in the body. It's critical to know the state of fats in the system, the brain, the membrane of every single cell. So when F2 isoprostane is elevated, you're not working in a way that's meaningful for restoring health in those areas. Finally, we look at a marker called 8-hydroxy-2-diaguanosine. And that sounds a bit familiar, right? Guanosine, like DNA. And that's exactly what we're talking about. When 8-OHDG goes up, it means the DNA is being damaged. This is what happens before we hit a point of having a cancer. It's these changes in the DNA that create a mutation that allow that cancer to occur. And it's not one mutation, but tens of thousands of mutations so we have an opportunity to capture it before it occurs. However, if we drill down in the literature and look at 8-OHDG, we know it goes up with most toxins that we're exposed to. And what it tells us is, is it too much for that patient? We can think about the level of toxic exposure, for example, we could handle when we're younger versus when we age, right? We think back to maybe that party in college and uh, those two beers or three beers that were quite easy to deal with. Now, if you do the same thing tonight, you might feel it a little bit more. That is your ability to handle oxidative stress. It changes with age. It changes with exposure. We know this. Many of our patients could be exposed to the same things in the environment. They live in the same cities. They drink the same water. They eat similar foods. Yet one person will be compromised from that and the other won't. A great example of that are our kiddos on the spectrum are autistic children. One of the things that happens there is we know that there's a compromised ability to detoxify. And so when 8-OHDG is elevated, we know the toxins are too much for that person's system. Whether or not we're talking mold aflatoxin, which 8-OHDG goes up in response to, toxins from the environment, cigarette smoke, 
toxins that will result in cancerous changes, 80HDG lets us know that that person has too much exposure and it's creating damage on a DNA level. It guides us. It says, let's use more antioxidants. Things that are water soluble are typically what will cause the best shift in 80HDG. So things like vitamin C or sulforaphane from broccoli sprouts, all of these things will help to lower an 80HDG. And patients resonate with that, right? They know that, ah, Compounds from broccoli are good for me. Why? Because they reduce my risk of cancer. So we can see it, we can measure it, we can know if the oxidative exposure is too much for that patient and how much we need to dose in, in order to do that. One of the issues with integrative medicine is that we have to deal with the entire environment. And that's not exposure to one toxin, that's literally exposure to thousands of toxins. So what do we do about that? Do we measure every toxin out there? Even if we could, if we could put thousands of toxins on one profile, the cost of that would be exponential. Or we can say, are you exposed to too much for your system? So these markers, while they're nonspecific and will go up for many reasons, let you know that that patient is on overload. They let you know that that mold toxin is contributing to what's happening in the system. And that 80-HDG that goes up in response to DNA damage is not isolated in just the nucleus. Remember, our mitochondria also have a nucleus too. So when 80-HDG is elevated, that lets you know that there's mitochondrial compromise as well, a key reason that people feel worn down and that their energy is lower. So by looking at our major intercellular antioxidant, glutathione, but understanding is it in that active form, that reduced form that only persists point does. And then coupling that with, is it too much oxidative stress for the fats in the body? Is it too much oxidative stress for the DNA in the body? We can really see functionally, have you hit your limit? Is the exposure too much for you? And now we know to jump in, we know to use antioxidants, and we can track where the patient is at and understand when they're back to a normalcy. This is important whether or not we're talking inflammation, uh, whether we're talking toxic overload, certain infections, even cardiometabolic events. Diabetes can create a level of oxidative stress as well. In fact, in your patients where they're eating well and they're, they remove the sugar, oxidative stress alone is enough to cause insulin resistance. It's what puts a burden on the system. When there's more oxidative stress, there'll be an increased rate of aging. That's just a simple way of saying there'll be more age-related conditions. And the more we can slow that down, the more we can make the mitochondria healthy, the cell healthy, and ultimately the patient healthy. I appreciate you being here with me and learning a bit more about advanced oxidative stress and how we can take patient care to that next level. If we piqued your interest, head over to Precision Point Diagnostics. Check out the education tab. There you'll find more information for you, references, you'll find patient guides, you'll find blogs, videos, all of these things that can help you to utilize this in patient care. Take care.